Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, we are going to analyze the brand new high res map that we have of the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet region. Let's jump right into things. So this right here is the map of the Paldea region. We finally got a high res version. We finally got a look at the region as a whole. There's a lot to look at here. There is a lot of little details that we can examine and try to garner some new information about what Scarlet and Violet are all going to be about. Now, I know that was an awesome trailer. I know there was a ton to talk about. I wanted to do a deep dive into this map before anything else, because so much of this game is about the overworld. So much of this open world experience is going to be about what's littered through all of these little paths and up these mountains and down these cliffs on these islands. What is going on with all of this colorful glitter going about the region, which is a theme in a lot of this art. Some of the Pokemon art that they've put out on the Scarlet and Violet website has this glitter design around the Pokemon. It's not part of the Pokemon themselves, but it is a theme of the region. It is a motif of the region. We're going to jump right into this analysis video here, and let's start right down here. This this right here, this is your starting point. This is the starting point of the region. This is your home. We can very clearly see this from the trailer. This is the building that we see you get your Pokemon in front of, and then you begin the trek upwards. This is your first area. This is the first place you can explore. Couple questions I have about the map. First off, what is map design specifically? And what is actually traversable? We've seen that you can use Koridon and Maridon to travel about the region. So these cliffs here, can you go up them? This little lake here, this little pond, can you go to that pond? There's so much about this map of Paldea that really opens up compared to maps of previous regions. Whenever we played through a previous Pokemon game, these paths were pretty much the only things you would see, taking you from little areas of civilization up to big cities and over to towns, which we're all going to look at here. But now that this is open world, this is pretty much all areas you can go to. And I think one of the first things we need to take note of is that while this map is completely open, it does appear that it is broken off into various little sections. So let's start right here. We're going to use colors to differentiate the different sections. This large green grassy area down here is probably the first area you're going to get to explore in the Paldea region. You've got your starting home here. You've got one of these towers here. You have what appears to be a little park with one of the Pokemon gas stations right here. And then, of course, you get to the big town in the center, which I would believe the school is located in because we've seen this part right here in a lot of the trailers. But this is your first section that you're going to get to explore. It is connected to a couple of other locations. You can see that it connects to this more deserty area here and some more of these traffic stops and towers are also located in this area. This is your entryway. I'm going to take a gamble and assume that these waterways are not going to be traversable. You're going to get to see them. You're going to get to go up to them, maybe fish for wild water type Pokemon in them, but they're not going to be explorable. These ponds and lakes are going to be explorable and you're probably going to be able to go up and down waterfalls like this to access areas down here, maybe with some special Pokemon that you wouldn't necessarily find up in these more plentiful areas, but this is where you're going to be. So this section is here. You can access the city from right here, this royal entryway with the gas station Pokemon Center here. I would imagine there's going to be some kind of check here, or maybe there's a story reason for your first entry, and then once you've cleared that story, beat, you're going to be able to come and go. If you can travel up and down these mountains, which this little tower here would lead us to assume you can, then there is also a sprawling pathway under the rocks here into this farmland area. I can tell that this is farmland because you have a little civilization here, a town, and you have crop areas outside of it. You've got another one of these towers right near another one of these Pokestops. One of the things that was revealed in the trailer, the most recent trailer, was that there's going to be three different paths that you can take. You can take on the gym challenge, which is going to be areas such as, let's find a gym challenge location, probably every town, 
<laughs> so there's probably going to be a gym challenge location here. You can see this center point with the battlefield. This is a gym location, but there's also other features. This here is another one of those challenge areas. If we go back to what we were looking at previously, these towers, it's one of the three things that they showed off in the second trailer for Scarlet and Violet. Actually, no, in the first trailer for Scarlet and Violet, which we analyzed thinking at the time they would be three different types of gyms. But no, it looks to be that they're separate. So this is a bit of farmland. This is probably connected to this southern region, but I would have to assume that this is your starting point. This is something separate here. And then these waterways are separating this as its own smaller area. So this is definitely some farmland that is connected to the main city. We have more of these towers. You have what appears to be a bit of an indent. You can probably just go through here and explore or go up. You can also go down back into this grassy area, which is probably how you're going to get to these towers, get to this waterfall, all of that there. I want to go this way from the city here because it's not only connected via the main hub in the center of the Caldea, the Paldea region, but it's also connected on this path. We see more of these towers. We did get confirmation in the trailers that there's going to be a mini map for the first time in a Pokemon game. That would make sense. This is a fully open world game. Maybe these towers are how you expand that minimap's access. If anybody's played Breath of the Wild or Assassin's Creed, towers are very much used as markers in the land, and it's how you unlock different parts of your minimap and how you see more of the region. There's nothing off to the side here, except there's a little bit of a beach area here. There's a beach here with another Pokemon Center. There's some islands off the coast definitely down by your starting area with what appears to be a little Pokemon battlefield. So I would imagine that these waterways down here, this little ocean to the south of the Paldea region is probably going to be explorable in some way. Maybe not off the rip, but eventually you're going to be able to explore it. Going into this desert area, big mountain features here. This massive mountain, which is probably going to hide this town is right here. I would imagine all these cliffs are explorable. You'd have to imagine we've seen Pokemon like Gogoat. That would probably be a Pokemon that you could find here. Skidoo, maybe the new form for Gogoat, which some believe is being teased in the new trailer. This town right here is definitely a gym challenge town, as we saw before. More settlements to what we've seen in Paldea to this point. And then you continue on. This is more confirmation, these towers, that this all is explorable. Most likely, this island is going to be explorable. You're probably going to have to get to it from this beach area here, which means you would have to travel down to the beach to access it here. The fact that they've filled in some of these spots tells me this is something that is of note. It's a gorgeous map, by the way, just generally. This is going up to this challenge area where eventually you have a couple options of where you can go. There is a wooded forest area here at the base of the big big crater in the center of the region. I would have to imagine that a massive crater as a side net, we'll get to this in more detail, has to do with something with the story of the game. There's a forest here that you're going to be able to explore and probably get some gorgeous views of this mountainous desert region down here from here. I cannot wait to see that in game. And eventually you come to a oceanside city with what appears to be a lighthouse. We've seen this in the most recent trailer, these big buildings right off the coast. We saw those in the newest trailer. Of course, it's a Pokeball shape. It's always a Pokeball shape. I would imagine there's probably some kind of battle or mart or something in this reefside city here. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is always greatly appreciated. There are more badlands. I would describe this as a desert and I would describe this is a bad land, just in terms of the color. You hit this lighthouse, which could be significant to one of the three gameplay paths. And this is a pretty barren area. There's not a lot that we can initially see on the map besides different pond features, these towers still. Some things that clouds are covering. Is there something here? It's entirely possible. They've covered things up with clouds in previous maps, and it's been something that we've had to wait until the game to actually see. 
This is completely cut off until much later in the game. You have a little forest area, which seems to be some kind of retreat up to the north. There's a bridge connecting this part and here, but it is marked by an entryway with purple flags. So maybe there is some sort of gameplay challenge or something going on in this portion of the map. I just I just ushered to the to the monitor with my hands as if you can see that right now. You have this desert civilization here with another seemingly looks to be some kind of battle arena here in the center another pokemon stop these are very close which makes me question the scaling of the map these two traffic centers these two pokemon center gas stations are very close in terms of the map but how close are they in reality you have a little civilization here this can go up into the gorge well it remains to be seen if this is explorable because that would connect up into here but not really you're kind of blocked by a lot of mountain passages which is okay this seems to be a dead end, ultimately. It doesn't seem that you're going to be able to, tra to traverse very far up here. Although, I will note that this mountain pass, which is much more connected to this side of the region, does have some little pieces up here. I would imagine all of this, this gorgeous looking dark brown forested area with more towers here is definitely a place you're going to get to explore. We can tell that not only because of the attention to detail in the map, but because of these relay stations right here. All of this is eventually blocked off by cloud. This is the tip of the region. This is the northeastern point of the region right here. This is all shrouded in cloud. It remains to be seen if this is something that you're going to be able to explore or if this is a border of the map. The mountain ski lodge we're going to get to. I'm going to cut the region here. This is where I'm going to cut it off and we're going to move back onto this side because you can continue to traverse into this part of the region here. It leads me to believe that if I was going to guess, starts here. If you're playing the game, like how they sort of like line up the gyms in terms of difficulty, let's go with the gym path for now because that's what we know the most about. You're going to be able to explore up into here, go into the city, go this way, take on this, go here, go here, circle back to the city, maybe deal with this institution here, which is connected via a mountain pass. And that mountain pass is that mountain pass, excuse me, is connected through the city. This is the entrance here. This is the other entrance or the exit from here to here. So that's how you access this. There is a pathway leading up to this western part of the region. You can see a collection of windmills, which we saw in the trailer. This would lead me to believe that this is still decently early game, considering they showed it off so early. You're going to be able to travel southward from there and meet this desert town, this coastal desert town. There's some palm beaches. There is a cave entrance, notably right here. That would lead me to believe that it juts out somewhere back here so you can explore this cliffside or maybe it's just a cave and there's something inside the cave for you. Another one of these towers here, more coastal beach area. Maybe the cave lets out and there's a whole explorable region down here off the cliffside. I think that's entirely possible. Going up here past the windmills again, they're all littered about this mountain range. They're not just here. They're also down on the crest of the mountain. This mountain also leads to a rock formation right at the top of this path and a little jutted out area, which you can probably go to as well. This is where we hit like a legit desert, like a desert desert. This tower is completely submerged in the sand. The sands have wiped this thing away. So you've got to imagine this is going to be some kind of rune or relic area, probably going to find some Pokemon like Ball Toy and other ones like that. Maybe some Yamask in this desert. There's a rock formation as well in the desert, which probably has some kind of story significance just because of how it's all set up. But this is also something to keep in mind. These golden things flying about still makes presence here. More towers. Towers are everywhere. This entrance is the most peculiar to me because generally I've attributed as, as I've analyzed the map and as we're now talking about it, these are entrances into areas where there's going to be some kind of challenge, but it appears that there's two different ways to get to this city here. There's through the flags, which lead you all around here. And then there's also what I assume is going to cut through the back of this little hill here because this just ends. I don't think that's just going to end. I think this is connected, and then this pathway here, which goes through this canyon, is also connected, and it forks. That's what I would have to guess. This is a much more tropical city, right nestled between the desert 
and what I assume is probably a waterfall of some kind over here, just judging. This is definitely a waterfall right here. But it's interesting that this is so blue and so tropical right next to the desert. We go over here, there's another town or maybe some kind of um, plant or operating bay. It doesn't appear the same as some of these other towns down here. They seem a little bit different up here. It accesses a bay as well, which is something of note. This is not flush with the ocean here. This is a this is above and this is below. You can tell because you dip down here to go onto the pathways. This is a rock formation, a mountainous formation jutting out over the water. So you can't just walk from a beach right here into the water. That's not possible. Just some things to note. This whole area is more open grasslands, just like down here. There is some more autumn features up here. The trees start to change color up here a lot more. It is down here too, but the fact that they're changing the land itself, I do love. There's a big lake, awesome big lake that you're going to get to explore. This year caught my eye at first, these rock formations. I thought, is there something sitting on top of this rock? But no, it's just more of this. There's so many jutting pathways, areas that could be cave entrances or might just be artistic choice like that. There's more towers, trees, and then this here, these dual waterfalls with a lake at the top and an entryway. Could it be just where the water comes out? Could it be something where you can go internally inside this mountain and explore? We're not entirely sure. The pathway here just ends. You can make your way up because we see this Pokemon Center station here. We see this tower here with more flags and a boggy swamp looking area. So this is going to end and it's probably going to get really rugged. We also know that getting up here is going to be a big challenge. This is probably what I've spent and I will note this station connected to this town is noteworthy just because it's the only legitimate entry point into this really ominous swirling storm in the middle of the crater. That could be very much of note. But I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how this mountain works. You can follow the path, and this could just be a ski resort. It's very possible. But this mountain path does come down here and connects to all of these walkways. Now this seems to go up here. This is where I would bet you're going to gain access to this big mountain peak. There are two mountain peaks here. This is the much larger one, of course. And this is the entryway where I would think you would get access. You can travel across this bridge over the waterfall, so this is definitely traversable. And this eventually does take you all the way up to the peak. There's another tower there, probably with another gorgeous view of this eastern part of the region from up here, which I cannot wait. And then you've got all this. You have a snowy town right at the peak, a little Snow Point City-esque. This is connected through riverways, which travel all along the mountain. There is a... Pokemon center stop here. There is a tower with you could you could claim that's many things. Could it be a Pokeball? Very possible. Could it be the logo of some organization or some group? Very possible. There's a lot here that we're looking at. The mountain peak is draped in cloud cover, of course. This map is super interesting. This map is super interesting for a variety of reasons. I'm really intrigued by this desert location and this cave. I want to know where that goes. Of course, there's this. What is this? What story beats is this going to communicate to us? This is the dead center of the region. It is almost completely cut off via Rocky Mountain scapes. There are very few what looks to be an observation bay, something else at the base here, an entryway that does not have any discernible cave entrance inside just connects to the town, the city here. So what is this? What's its purpose? All of these swirling gold around the region comes back here and swirls around here as well with the eye of the storm. This is what could be like the sunlight reflecting off of it, you know. So what is it? We don't know. We have no idea. It's almost as big as the mountain, but it's dead center in the region. So we'll see. There's going to be there's going to be some interesting story beats definitely to this. I would have to imagine there's something under there, whether it's a lake, whether it's a crater, whether it's a headquarters. 
something. Something to do with the legendary Pokemon, Coridon and Moridon's hiding point. Maybe a meteor crashed on the region and these Pokemon are from space. I don't know. There, there's a, Why is there a big crater? It's, a, it's an open question. We're not sure yet. This area, special shout out. This is 100% connected to Kalos. 1000%. Just go off of real world geography for a moment. This is Spain. France is up there geographically speaking. This is completely clouded off. Maybe this is eventually a DLC area, which gives more reference to Kalos, or it's just a nod to Kalos. One of the two. This is a great region. This is a gorgeous map. I love that they gave us a high-res version, and map analysis videos of these, these locations now mean so much more because it's an open-world game. What do you guys think? What are your favorite locations from the, the, this map for Scarlet and Violet. What areas stand out the most to you? What are you most excited to explore in the game? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this map analysis video, be sure to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're going to have a ton of Scarlet and Violet content coming over the next few days. There's so much to talk about with this new trailer. It's going to be fun. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.